Welcome to this Learn Electrics Help and Tips video about the 18th edition wiring regulations exam. This is session number three and in this video we are looking at the table of tables, the section at the back of the wiring regulations book. There is a lot to get through in this video but at the end of it you will be much more confident in using the regs and answering exam questions. The 18th edition exam is not about what you can remember. You need to show that you know how to use the wiring regulations and that you can find the answer in the book. These practice questions will help you to do just that, to be able to quickly navigate through the book and find the answer. Using the knowledge gained in this video, you will be able to quickly uncover the keywords in every question and use this information to navigate to the correct part of the book. As we said, this video is about the table of tables on pages 522 to 524. This is a list of all the tables that appear in the wiring regulations in the order that they appear in the book. They cover parts 4 to 7 and the appendices. Many exam questions can be answered quickly and easily by finding the correct table. The first thing that we must do is to check that your copy of the regulations is complete. Two tables have been missed out from some books. If this affects your copy, write these details in now. You will need this information in the exam. Look on page 523. Table 55.3 may be missing. Between table 55.2 and table 64, you should have table 55.3. It is called Explanation of Symbols Used in Luminaires and the page number is 222. Pause the video and write in this information on page 523 now. Another missing table is table 4B1, again on page 523 and between table 4A3 and table 4B2 you should have table 4B1. It is called Rating factors, CA, for ambient air temperature other than 30 degrees centigrade. And the page number to write in is 394. Pause the video again and write it in now. Let's begin. Look at pages 522 to 524 and understand how the table of tables is laid out. This will save you valuable time in the exam. Part 4 of the regulations is covered by the top half of page 522. All the tables begin with the number 4. Part 5 tables then follow and continue onto page 523 as well. And these all begin with the number 5. Part 6 has only one entry, table 64. And a question on this table is in almost every exam. Part 7 has a few entries beginning with 7 or A7. And finally, all the appendices, lots of tables. If you can find the table, you can easily find the correct regulation and the words to go with it. The tables are matched to the appropriate regulations and are really easy to use with practice. Over the next few pages, we will show you some worked examples of questions using the tables. Then there are several questions for you to attempt unaided at the end with answers. So let's begin with question one. A worked example. The question asks, what is the maximum disconnection time for a final circuit in a TN system with a nominal AC voltage of 230 volts? And here are your four choices. Begin by looking for the keywords as shown here in red lettering. One of these keywords will show you which table you need. What is the question asking for? Maximum disconnection time. We need to find a table with the keywords maximum disconnection time. And on page 522, we find that this is table 41.1 and it tells us to go to page 59. Here is the table 41.1 on page 59. And we can start to use our other keywords. You need to get used to this symbol. It looks like a letter V on its side with an extra line. This symbol, drawn this way, says equal to or less than. 
the nominal voltage must be equal to or less than 230 volts. This is nominal voltage that we are talking about, even though the actual voltage may be 240 volts or more. For any domestic final circuit, always assume 230 volts nominal. If we follow the keywords, we will see that we have an AC column and a TN row. Where they cross is our answer. And we should select choice D, 0 0.4 seconds. On to question 2 now. If the voltage is 415 volts and the current is 15 amps, what is the minimum separation distance between power and signal cables? And four possible answers. Here are the key words that I would use. And on page 522, find the key words. Look for minimum separation distance between power and signal cables. It is there. And you are told the table A444.2 is on page 119. On page 119, you will find this table. Imagine that this is actually two separate tables, with voltage on the left and current on the right. And let's see how this works in practice. Looking at our keywords, we have a separation distance for voltage and a different separation distance for current. But which one to use? Look at note 2 below the table. It tells us to use the worst case value, in other words, the biggest distance. Which one to choose should be easy now. You should choose answer B, 0 0.58 metres. And on to question 3. A single cable is surrounded by insulation for a distance of more than 0 0.5 metres. The current carrying capacity calculation shall use the derating factor of what? Start by finding the keywords. Now find the table. On page 522, we find a reference to table 52.2. It says, cable surrounded by thermal insulation, and it is on page 144. And this is the table shown here. But this table stops at 400 millimeters, and we need 0 0.5 meters or 500 millimeters. This table is not going to help, or is it? If you can find the table, you've found the regulation and the rest of the words that will help you to answer the question. So, go back one page to page 143 and there are the words to go with table 52.2 as shown here. And this is the answer. If the length is longer than 0 0.5 metres or 500 millimetres, then we are advised to use the derating factor of 0 0.5 when calculating the current carrying capacity of cables. The answer to choose is 0 0.5, answer A. So you can see that even though the table didn't have the answer, it did lead us to the correct answer. And on to question 4. The question is, when testing an electrical installation, what is the minimum value of insulation resistance for a self circuit and what is the test voltage to be applied? Choose your answer from the four that are offered. First things first, find the keywords. On page 523 we find this information. Table 64, minimum values of insulation resistance and it tells us to go to page 232. And here is the table. Almost every exam will ask you a question on this table. Use the next keyword to find the self row and there is your answer. And now make your decision. In this case we should choose answer D, 0 0.5 mega ohms and 250 volts DC. The next 10 questions are all unaided. Lots for you to attempt yourself. Follow the same principle that we have just done. All the tables can be found from pages 522 to 524. Find your keywords, find the table in Table of Tables, and then find your answer. The keywords will lead you to the correct table in Table of Tables. Everything starts from the Table of Tables on page 522 to 524. After reading the question, 
pause the video and find the correct answer. There are 10 questions, numbered 5 to 14, and the answers will be shown to you towards the end of the video. The questions appear in no particular order. Please do attempt every question. It will definitely make your life so much easier in the exam. And keep practicing. It will begin to make sense. And so to question 5, for you to attempt yourself. Question 5 asks, What is the minimum cross-sectional area of a buried earthing conductor if it is made of copper, is not protected against mechanical damage, and is not protected against corrosion? Pause the video, look for the table with the key words, find the answer, and write down your selection. As we said, answers at the end. And now, question 6. Here we go. What is the rating factor, CA, for ambient air temperature that should be applied to a cable that is installed in an environment of 40 degrees centigrade? Pause the video, find the keywords, find the table, find the answer. Take your time and move on when you're ready. And now, question 7. We are asked... The permissible voltage drop for a lighting circuit in the low voltage installation supplied directly from a public low voltage distribution system is what? Stop the video again, find the keywords, find the table, write down the answer. This is question 8 now. What is the minimum cross sectional area for a flexible cable used for a caravan connection? with a maximum load of 25 amps. Pause the video, find the keywords, and write down the answer. And now to question 9. Where colours are used for the identification of conductors, the negative wire of a two-wire earthed DC power circuit should be coloured what? Again, pause, find the table, and write down the selection. On to question 10. This question asks, where a handheld metallic item is used, the temperature limit under normal load conditions for an accessible part of equipment within arm's reach is what? Pause the video, find the table and find the answer. And next is question 11. When considering the functional allocation and cross-sectional area of a core for a caravan connector, a reversing light that is to comply with BSAU177A should be... And you have four choices. Pause again while you find the table and the answer. And now, question 12. According to the table for 70 degrees centigrade thermoplastic insulated and sheathed flat cable with protective conductor, a 16 mm squared cable that is installed to reference method C or clipped direct has a maximum current carrying capacity of what? Pause the video, read the question carefully. The table is there. Once you find the table, the rest should be easy. Use the key words. Now, question 13. The question is, a four-core flexible cable to BSEN 50525 series has been installed using the old core colours. The correct colour sequence for this cable is... what? Again, pause the video. Look for the keywords that will help you to find the table, and then the answer. This last question is question 14. When considering devices and associated functions, a contactor to BSEN 60947-4-1 can be used for which of the following functions? Pause again and find the keywords, then the table, and finally the answer. Just a little reminder that the help and tips given in this video are intended to help you to understand how the book is organised and how to quickly and easily find answers by using the keywords that are included with every question. They are not intended to replace classroom teaching where you should be taught to understand the regulations. 
and their importance to the safe and correct functioning of installations. Practice is the key to getting better. And here, as promised, are the answers to questions 5 to 14. We've also included the table number that you should have found from the keywords and the actual page number in the regulations book where the table is located. We hope that you enjoyed these questions and that you will find the next session of exam question help just as informative. We will also leave a link in the description to the playlist for this series of help and tips videos and also a link to the 18th edition training video. Good luck to you all. Thank you for watching this video, it is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar. Select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on Return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description and each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the top left of the home page and all our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector. Page 2, 3, 4 and so on. They will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. Once again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.